What is up, everyone? Welcome to a sum of two buses. So in this episode, we'll be showing you how to set up virtual sound check via Wave Super Rack, how to route your processing channels, and how to have scene control between the two machines. Wh why? Because it's high time someone makes a video that's straightforward and to the point on how to set up all this gear. It's great gear, why not? When I was integrating Waves into the X32 M32 platform, there was plenty of videos out there and it was super helpful. So let's change that today. What's virtual sound check? Good question. I feel like virtual sound check is one of the most important tools of a front of house engineer or even a monitor engineer for that matter. Let me try to explain. It starts with doing a multi-track of a sound check or a show. This recording is taking its tap or feed directly after the preamp, but before any processing. Virtual sound check is simply the process of rerouting your recording to the top of the input channels post the preamp. That way you can simulate having a virtual band for sound check, hence the name. This allows you to dive deep into tweaking your mix without having to ask the drummer to hit the snare drum a thousand times. Okay, so what is Super Rack? Another good question. Waves is a plugin manufacturer that also builds hardware in order to use these plugins in the live environment. They built what is called a sound grid network that has its own dedicated DSP in order to process their software in a fast, efficient way in order to avoid latency and computer failure. Waves has been a big part of the record-making process for a long time. Their software like SuperRack allows you to use those same plugins that were used to mix records in the live setting. So let's get started, shall we? First, let's start with making all the connections we're gonna need to make. Please note the importance of using the right CAT6 cables and a Waves-approved switch in order to make all these connections. You can find these recommendations on Waves' website. Let's take it to the whiteboard in order to show how to make these connections. So today we'll be talking about a single computer setup. Now, as you can see, you have your computer that's gonna be running your DAW and Super Rack, and you have a Waves-approved switch and then you have your wave servers set for redundancy. And then you have your surface and your mix rack. For today's example, we have the waves card inserted in the mix rack, specifically port two. And then we have our network ports right here. Each dot represents a connection that we can make. We're gonna first start by building our waves network. And it's as simple as this, your computer one, can go to one port on your switch. Your server one will go to another port on your switch. Server two will go to another port on your switch. And then we're going to take one of these Waves card sockets and hook it to the switch, right? Okay, now we have built our Waves network now we're gonna do a bridge in order to get our scene control. And you're gonna take one of these ports on the wave card and you're gonna make a bridge over to the network port on your mix rack. And you can also make these connections on the surface. The surface generally either has one or two ports for cards and it also has generally two network ports as well. So this same connection can be made on the surface. Okay, so now that you have everything connected, the next step is really important to achieving scene control between the DLive and Wave Super Rack. You will need to download a compatible version of Alan Heath's DAW control software that can be found on their website. Once you have it installed, because of the connections we've made, your computer is already on the network. So now once you open the DAW control, you're gonna have to select what type of mixer you'll be using. Select the TCP IP option, select what MIDI channel you'll be using. Today we'll be using channel one, and then you will need to enter your mix rack's IP address. If you're unfamiliar with your mix rack IP, you can simply go to mix rack network, and it will show you the IP address of your mix rack. Now please note it's extremely important for the DAW control app to show that you are connected. And you can find this indicator at the bottom of the software window. Personally, I've had issues running Wi-Fi or internet during this process, so try turning off your Wi-Fi and your internet connection and set up a manual IP address for your ethernet connection. For instance, today's example, my mix rack, as you can see, was 192.168.1. 
192.168.70. For my static IP, I'm running 192.168.1.33. Once you have your DAW control set up, it should look like this. Now we want to make sure that our console's MIDI settings are set appropriately. Now that we set up our DAW control software to use MIDI channel 1, we're going to want to set the same range in the desk. And you can find your MIDI channel settings by going to the Utility button, go to Control, and MIDI Controls, and down here you will see MIDI channel 1 through 5. You want to make sure that you're on 1 through 5, hit Apply, and we'll proceed. Now let's make sure that you have all the appropriate WAVE software installed on your computer. First you want to make sure that all the plugins that you're wanting to use in the live setting in SuperRack are on version 11. Also be sure that you install the version 11 sound grid driver and the version 11 Allen and Heath driver from WAVE Central. Oh, and you know, you might want to install SuperRack. Okay, so now that you did all that, be sure to save, shut down, and restart in this order just for safety. Once everything is powered off, start with powering on your console and make sure you load your show that you want to use. Now go ahead and power up your Waves network and then power up your computer last, making sure all of the connections are still connected. Now that your computer is on, be sure to start DAW control and verify that it's connected to the network. It's important that you do this first before starting SuperRack. Now that you verify the DAW control is up and connected, Open the SoundGrid driver app under the basic tab. Make sure you select the port for your SoundGrid network. And now it's time to fire up your SuperRack session. So go over to setup and verify that your port is selected for your Waves SoundGrid network. And make sure that your link is up, your speed is good, and your sample rate is correct. We're gonna wanna start with adding the card in our desk under the IO devices, drivers, and hosts area right here. So go to network devices and choose your card and everything looks good. Go ahead and click this gear wheel and verify that the driver is set to digital so that way you're clocking off the console not the card. Make sure that the sample rate is correct and everything looks good. So now let's add some servers. All right, server one, and server two. Now that your servers are up, be sure to click the drop down menu and select your server network buffer. This is the amount of latency that will be induced on the I.O. Please note, the faster the buffer speed, the more processing load will be induced on your servers. Now that that is all set up, let's set up our computer for playback and record. So we're going to want to go to I.O. Devices, Drivers and Hosts, go to the Network Devices, and add our computer that we'll be using for playback and recording. And now we're going to want to set how many driver channels we'll be using for record and playback. Click the drop down menu, go to driver channels, and today we'll do 64. Now before we go on, let's talk a little bit about I.O. Personally for me, I like to do one to one for my record and playback slash virtual sound check patch. The S3 Waves card is able to do 128 channels both ways. So what I do is I reserve inputs and outputs 1 through 64 for virtual sound check slash recording and playback. And I use inputs and outputs 65 through 128 for all of my waves inserts in SuperRack. So let's take a moment to set up a virtual sound check patch in the DLive. All right, let's go ahead and go to IO and let's go to the virtual sound check tab. This is where we'll find our virtual sound check patch right here. If you haven't used this before, it defaults to inactive. Be sure to select the port where your Waves card is. For me, it's in my MixRack IO port 2. And set how many driver channels you'll be using for your recording. For today, we'll be using 1 through 64. Being that I run my recording 1 to 1 on inputs 1 through 64, this default patch 1 to 1 will work for our recording for the most part. Now that our virtual soundcheck patch is set up, we can now switch to record send mode, which is show mode, or we can switch to virtual soundcheck mode, which pulls its inputs from our DAW. Let's go ahead and just switch to virtual soundcheck mode. All right, now it's time to switch over to SuperRack and make sure that our record and playback patch is set up. So in SuperRack, let's go to patch. And now we're going to see a to and from right here. From the card to the computer, we want to patch this 1 through 64. And now we want to switch this from the computer back to the card 1 through 64. Now that everything is patched, let's go ahead and set up our scene control, shall we? Hit setup, 
under controllers right here, click the plus, and you're going to want to add a MIDI controller. All right, let's set up the MIDI controller. So with the gear wheel open under the general area, we're going to want to receive MIDI in from DAW Control MIDI 1. This is from our DAW Control app. And then we're going to also want to follow program changes on a certain channel. And we already set that up in the DAW Control app. So let's go ahead and set that to 1. And make sure that Use Control Change is not selected. And you can close out of that. All right, now that all of that is set up, let's go ahead and set up two scenes in both Super Rack and DLive and go ahead and see if we can get Super Rack to follow the DLive's scene control. One thing to note, if you go to Show and look at Snapshots, there's this little number right here, and it starts at zero, and it goes to 127. With this setup, you have 128 scenes to work with, but you're starting at zero, which is important to remember because if you switch over to the DLive, you can see that our scenes start at 1. So there will be an offset of 1 from the DLive to the Super Rack, depending on what scene fires which scene in Super Rack. So now that we have two scenes set up, we have in the DLive, we have scene 120, which is song 1, and 121 is song 2. Let's switch over to Super Rack. If you look at my song 1 and song 2 is being triggered by scene 119 and 120. That is the one offset between these two machines that you have to keep in mind when setting up scenes. All right, so let's go ahead and see if our scenes are communicating. We're on scene one in the DLive. Switch over to Super Rack. We're on song one. Let's go ahead and fire song two and see what happens. Next, go. Looks like we have song two. Fantastic, love it. All right, now that everything is happy in Super Rack world and DLive world and everything is talking to each other, let's go ahead and fire up our DAW. Let's go ahead and go to Preferences, make sure that our Wave Sound Grid Network is selected as our input and output device. And then you're going to want to go to your mix window and make sure that all of your channels are going where they're supposed to be. Input 1 to output 1, and so on, depending on however you have your session set up. All right, now that everything is working up into this point, let's go ahead and insert a plugin, shall we? Let's do it over my uh, vocal mic. Let's go ahead and patch in our rack and get a plugin going. Let's go ahead and go to Overview 1, and let's go ahead and use Mono, here's our Waves card, and let's use the last channel, 128, or Socket 128. It assigned both the input and the output at the same 128, that's what we want. Let's go ahead and switch over to the DLive. Let's go ahead and select my vocal, set the Insert A point, patch in our Waves. We'll go to Mix Rack I.O. Port 2 which is where our Waves card is, socket 128, because that's what we patched in Super Rack. Mix Rack IO port 2, 128, and, and apply. apply. And, and now you, you can tell, tell that I'm hearing the reverb on my voice. It's inserted. And I went ahead and automated this reverb to change between the two scenes. So let's go ahead and fire the next scene and see what happens. Ah, a much bigger space. And I'm trying not to be lame, but probably failing miserably. A last little note here for you. In this demonstration, we used our IO 1 through 64 for playback and record, and we reserved 65 through 128 for waves processing inserts. We do this so whatever mode we're in, whether it's record, send, or show mode, or virtual playback mode, our channels will always be routed through waves so we can adjust them offline or during the show. I really do hope that this video helped you out. Be sure to tune in next episode when we talk everything drums. Well, that's it for this episode of the Summit Two Buses. If you dug it, please like, please share, please subscribe. Uh, until next time, take care and be safe. <laughs>